case are fixed a lot here. I've got a 2002 uh, BMW 330Ci and I'm going to be changing the brake booster as well as the master cylinder and some associated hoses that are here. Um, they have a vent hose or a vacuum hose here and uh, BMW also down below here has um, what they call a, a sucking jet pump hose. Uh, so I'm going to change those too. Um, this car is uh, exhibiting a squeal out of the brake booster. Uh, it's also exhibiting some vacuum leaks out of the brake booster. There's nothing wrong with the master cylinder, but uh, the car's got about 100,000 miles on it, so I'm going to go ahead, you know, when you change the brake booster, the master cylinder has to come out. This one has dynamic stability control, so I'll show you how to disconnect that. Um, it gets a little bit crowded with this uh, electronic unit in the way, but um, you should be able to reach in there. Um, we're going to begin by getting the car up on four jack stands and uh, draining the fluid that's in the reservoir here. You're going to be reusing this reservoir, um, but the master cylinder I'm going to change as well as the brake booster and some associated hoses. Okay, here are all the pieces that you're going to need to change. Uh, you just need just some regular tools, pliers, uh, sockets, and um, open or box end wrenches. Um, first thing we're going to change is the brake booster itself. This brand new one, it's ATE, uh, which is the factory one. Uh, this was bought off of eBay. Uh, sometimes what happens is, and this is the master cylinder, also purchased off of eBay, but anyway, sometimes what happens is this thing leaks at this area right here which connects on to this and it gets into the diaphragm area here and causes vacuum leaks. Uh, the other thing that happens is there's an anti-vacuum valve um, that plugs into here. This valve is commonly goes bad so a lot of the inexpensive fixes can actually be done by just replacing this small little valve right here. Um, I'm going to go ahead and show you the whole change um, again because my uh, brake booster is not doing so well. Um, even though my master cylinder is fine, I'm going to go ahead and show you how to bench bleed this master cylinder. Um, this one has the the reservoir sits in, in here and then these two ports here are for your brake lines and you have um, uh, fittings here that will go in for your um, dy dynamic stability control. So all of these are necessary. You want to keep these plugs because when you bench bleed um, these are going to be plugged back in with with a full reservoir. Um, so you want to have those in so that it doesn't it doesn't leak back out. The other thing I'm going to be changing is the hose that goes to this valve that's in here. Uh, this is the hose that comes out of it, and this is this sucking jet pump hose also. Um, this kind of goes on to here, and this part goes to the uh, towards the engine for vacuum, and um, this goes towards your, your air box or your intake hose. So those are the only things that are going to be changing, and of course you need... Um, probably a quart of brake fluid. I'm going to use DOT4 ATE uh, gold brake fluid and I've got three hose clamps here. Um, I don't have the German style ones, these are just the regular ones. Uh, these are one inch in diameter so I'm going to have to use those for kind of reconnecting um, these hoses here just to kind of secure the fitting. Alright, first things first, you're going to have to jack up the car uh, get all four wheels off the ground and then um, remove the wheels because you're going to have to come back and bleed all of the brakes. So uh, get them all up on all fours and remove those wheels. Next thing you want to do is uh, drain the reservoir in the master cylinder. The way I did this instead of using a turkey baster to uh, remove all the fluid is just hook up uh, your bleeder hose. Uh, it is an eight millimeter um, box end that you can use. I, I've got a flare nut wrench, but anyway, this is eight millimeters. Uh, you undo that a little bit, about a half a turn or so, and then you pump on the brakes from inside the car. It'll fill up 
this bottle and once you can basically feel no more pressure when uh, you're pushing on those brakes that's when you've got your master cylinder completely drained. Okay, first thing you want to want to do is remove the air box. You got to take off the front plenum. There are three um, basically rivet style uh, push pins here, uh, one, two, and three. And so I've got these two out already. I'm going to pull this one out. It's just simple pliers. Um, you just grab onto it and pull straight out, and it'll it, it'll it'll come right out just like that. You get the other ones out, and the box should come right out like this. Okay, next thing to be done is to remove the air box itself. You want to undo this hose clamp, just loosen it right here, unclip your um, mass airflow sensor wire. So um, this is just this clip right here. You lift it up, but make sure that it doesn't kind of fly off um, and you lose it so that you can just pull it off like this. This uh, wiring harness has a hook on this side that you just undo. And then there's two 10 millimeter screws over here on this side. I already undid them uh, that you undo. And then uh, forward of the air box, there is a plenum that connects up to the air box itself. Um, you'll probably have to wiggle that out after you've kind of moved it kind of backwards a little bit. So I'll show it to you here. I'm going to pull it out. You might have to release it. You can kind of see it's connected here. And it's the same thing. It goes back in um, in reverse. So this is the whole air box out of the uh, out of the car, including including this this little plenum, this air plenum, intake plenum. Now we're going to remove the cabin air filter support, uh, cabin air filter and its support. So this you just have to get the wiring harness unhooked on both sides. that will come right off and then these just come up like this for the cabin air filter there's just three of them and should pop forward and your cabin air filter will come right out good time to change it also then uh, there's just one, two, three, four Torx bolts back here that you have to undo, and then this tray will uh, come out. All right, once you have the air box as well as the cabin air filter support removed, you're going to have to get access to um, a panel right here. Um, and to get access to that panel, you're going to have to remove a um, couple of uh, kind of turn 90 degree turn rivets here one here and one back here and then uh, this panel will come off you have to remove some of these weather strip or yeah basically weather strip type uh, things right around this area once you have those removed then this this whole unit will have to have to come off. So you just undo some of the wiring harness as well as uh, hose supports like this and then this whole thing you've got to take that out once you remove these two right here. Alright now that you have this panel removed it makes it a lot easier to get access and there's a pin right here, I don't know if you can see it, there's a pin right here that has to be removed from this side. It's a Torx type screw. Sometimes it's uh, just a regular flathead screwdriver, but anyway, this has to be removed out and then this whole unit can come, the reservoir can come off. Um, 
you'll just want to put this aside and then lift the entire reservoir out and then you'll have access to this area. I've also inspected these, these hoses here. They're actually fine, so I'm not actually going to change the, this hose or that uh, jet pump down below. I'm just going to go ahead and change this valve that goes into the brake booster. Obviously change the booster as well as the master cylinder too. Alright, in order to get access to this area here, we're going to have to remove this cover. Just takes uh, four of these hex bolts. The cover comes right off. You want to undo a couple of these connections here in order to move this main wire out of the way and uh, this wire out of the way. Just take some pictures and you should be able to put it right back. Um, all of the connectors are keyed and they're all different so there's no way to actually mix them up. As long as you've got them hooked back in uh, you should be okay. And then you'll have access to this area here uh, in order to remove um, the master cylinder the brake lines as well as the connections for the dynamic stability control. Alright, as a close up of the master cylinder. Even though I removed the attachment pin for the reservoir, I'm gonna I'm gonna keep the reservoir on here because we're gonna uh, reassemble it in reverse. So I've got the two 13 millimeter nuts undone on both sides here and here for the master cylinder base. But before you undo these, go ahead and crack open the brake lines because it's going to need some leverage there in order to get those done. Those are 11 millimeter. Get those cracked open but don't uh, completely disconnect them. Then go ahead and do the 13 millimeters on both sides of the master cylinder. Disconnect the electrical connections for the DSC You'll just kind of have to reach down there and there's a, um, a lever that you kind of push and then you just pull on the, on the plug and it'll come right out. Once you have all this done, then quickly, you know, go ahead and, you know, brake fluid is actually pretty, pretty corrosive. So uh, it'll take off any paint that you have down there. Make sure you've got everything protected down below with like t-shirts or rags. Um, this is what I have. I, I've got a rag underneath the... Uh, brake line connections. I'm going to undo those and then just lift the whole master cylinder out. Alright, I've got the lines disconnected and you just kind of pull back on it like this. And the whole unit will come up. We'll see brake fluid's dripping a little bit but I've got a towel underneath. So these are your connections for your DSC and then has the connections for your um, uh, brake lines and then it comes out just like this. This is a Metelli um, brake master and I'm going to be replacing it with the same Metelli. Um, this will come off and I'll attach it to the other uh, brake master cylinder and then bench bleed it. Um, and then you switch over these electrical DSC connections to the uh, to the other unit. All right, in order to remove the um, brake booster, you have to move the DSC unit a little bit. Um, there's a 10 millimeter bolt that's straight down here. Um, that anchors this this unit and you kind of just have to move it a little bit because this thing needs about an inch or an inch and a half to move out in order to 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 get out. Um, you have to remove two bolts from inside the car and I'll show you how to do that in a second. Alright, next we've got the under panel for the dash and there's three screws like this. There's a rivet on this side and a turn screw over there and then um, you just kind of pull down on it and it should uh, it should come out. You have to get the rivet out first completely. And it should 
come forward. Um, like this. And you don't have to completely disconnect the electricals on this side, but you can if you want in order to get more access. Alright, I apologize for the handheld here, but where, you know, underneath the uh, dash you have two bolts, one here and one up here, and then you have this one pin here that needs to be um, undone. I'll try to get some more light on it, but uh, you have this clip on here, you remove that and then you push the pin out. Uh, attachment is in the reverse of this. Just remember which side the um, the diaphragm's uh, arm comes on. It's on the left side of this pedal. And that's about it. Once you undo those two bolts in this, then the diaphragm will come out. The uh, booster will come out and then you put the new one in. Uh, bolt those down and then hook this back up. All right, sorry again for the handheld. This is the top of the brake pedal assembly. There's one more nut here that you have to loosen. This whole unit has to be loose in order for you to disconnect the brake booster arm from uh, the brake pedal arm. You have to have both loose and then, um, not the brake pedal arm, but uh, you have to have this loose and then uh, the twisting motion itself will allow you to disconnect the two and then you can pull the brake booster out from uh, the engine compartment. Okay I completely understand why this is such an expensive procedure. You actually have to remove or at least move out of the way the DSC unit. DSC unit sits in here like this. You have to disconnect four brake lines and then pull the whole thing up and out and then you'll be able to pull the um, brake booster out. Put the brake booster back in and then put the DSC unit back in making sure that it anchors on its two two points at the bottom down here and um, there's, there's one bolt right here uh, and then you reconnect the four uh, brake lines to the DSC unit. All right, we have the old master cylinder on the bench. Has the new one right here. I want to take off the caps for the reservoir. You're going to want to put the reservoir back in there. And these are the hex screws for the sensors for the DSC. You want to remove these and then get ready to transfer the sensors into, um, into the new master cylinder. Like this. Put this aside. And got it in a vice grip with a little bit, a few towels down here. And just kind of give it a hit. And it comes right off. Same thing with the other side. Might have a little bit of brake fluid coming out. That's okay. Kind of keep it left right. At the same time, you kind of wiggle the um, the reservoir up. Just look for cracks down here. There aren't any, so you should be able to. Assemble up a new one right on top of it. Uh, 
I'm going to use a just a um, rag in order to kind of protect it a little bit. I don't have to tighten it too much. And then the reservoir goes back in the same way. Once it's set, you can install the kind of the set screw, this side here. This one's got a flathead screwdriver on this side, so I'm just use that. Crank that down and put on your sensors, left and right. Tighten those down, and I'll show you how to bench bleed in a second. All right, I'm going to show you how to bench bleed your master cylinder. This is a new one. Let's take the top off. Type 200, which is like ATE gold. It's a dot four ATE brake fluid. You just fill it up as best you can. And once it gets up to, I kind of have to do it slowly, but once it gets up to a certain level, there's going to be some that's going to be spilling out here, as you can see. And essentially what you want to do is you want to, you want to plug it up, press, plug, press, Plug, press, plug, press, plug, press, plug, press, plug. And you'll get to a point where there's not going to be much air coming out. And at that point, you can... Go ahead and seal up the unit. I'm going to use a screw plug on this side because it's running out pretty fast and I didn't have a, a another plug to to use. So I'm going to use that screw style plug in here. And that'll seal it. And you bring the whole thing over to the car and install it as a whole. This one has a new O-ring right here. Um, and so once you install it, then you go ahead and hook up the electrical connections here for the DSC. Refill the reservoir and then go ahead and uh, bleed the brake circuit. Alright, you install the master cylinder, first secure the uh, DSC dynamic stability control unit, put that all in place and then reattach all the, the four hydraulic lines, then install the master cylinder and, in, and attach the uh, electrical connections and then the um, two brake lines. Um, Hook the hoses back up. I replaced the uh, check valve here for the uh, brake booster and then um, set the cover in, uh, put your tray in, and um, then go ahead and, and put the air box in and bleed the brakes. Okay, everything's back together again. The cabin filter tray and cabin filter. Um, the brake uh, master cylinder is filled up, uh, air box is in, uh, electricals are connected here, and the plenum is also connected. So the next step here is to bleed the brakes, starting with the right rear, then left rear, right front, and then um, left front. 
you're going to have to bleed it pretty thoroughly since um, only the master cylinder has been uh, uh, pre-bled or bench bled and so it still has to go through the DSC unit and then all the way through um, the rest of the car so hopefully you won't have any air bubbles in the um, in the brake system and you should be good to go after that.